So welcome everybody at our, uh, the BitCrace uh, developer meeting of uh, the 8th of May, Wednesday. Um, so how it will go today is that we'll have a short presentation by Marcus uh, to talk about uh, today's topic, uh, which is a forward facing suspension connector and just to kind of get a feedback because this is kind of like, you know, you can make a camera deck out of it, but it's so much more than that. And we have to stop the madness before he starts making a an expansion connector for an expansion connector that connects back to the crazy fly. So let's give him feedback on this one, okay? Now it's a really cool prototype and we're very excited about it and we hope you'll be excited about it as well. Um, so how it goes is that we'll have the first part is going to be recorded. That's going to be particular about the uh, about this uh, forward-facing expansion connector. And um, after that, we're going to stop the recording after those questions have been answered. So you can also ask us some regular, um, just some feedback or some other questions that you don't want to have recorded. So just to let you know. So I will give the words now to Marcus to, um, yeah, teach us more about this awesome prototype he's been working on. Go for it. Yeah. Thanks, Kimberly. So, uh, yeah, I will be talking about the prototype that we made for a forward-facing expansion connector. So it's the same expansion connector that we did a prototype on, uh, or sorry, a blog post on last week. Um, and like Kimberly said, we're going to talk a little bit about the sensor. Uh, we're going to show a video of it working, and then there's going to be some uh, time for questions and also uh, some feedback and ideas. So um, let's get started. So um, the current X sub system was released in um, 2014 together with a crazy flight 2.0. And the idea was to be able to easily add new sensors to the crazy fly. So we wanted to be able to release new sensors easily without basically building a new quadcopter. And we also wanted our customers to be able to add the sensors that they needed for their experiments or for development, whatever they were doing without carrying around like a lot of stuff. Obviously, you can't fit all of this on the crazy fly. We built it, uh, we added a one wire memory. So <clears throat> this makes it possible to auto detect the decks. So you put on the decks, you can put multiple decks on, uh, you can put them on the top and the bottom. And when you power it on, it's going to be initialized, uh, the driver is going to be initialized uh, automatically for these. And then you can use them directly from the firmware or from your client. And there's a yeah a host of different buses you can have and uh, power domains and so on. So sensor basically like PCBs that you can stick on top and bottom. It's quite easy to add sensors that face upwards or downwards. But adding something that faces forward is a bit trickier um, and requires some mechanics or yeah some additional uh, hands-on. So. Um, Today, we already have some of these. So we have the AI deck, for instance. The AI deck has a forward-facing uh, camera. We also have the multi-ranger that has the VL um, time of flight sensor in uh, not only forward, but also left, right, and backwards and up. Both of these are kind of uh, complicated. I mean, the multi-ranger um, requires yeah, special hands-on when uh, uh, manufacturing it. and also, the AI deck requires specific mechanics for the camera and so on. So uh, when we started thinking about this, we thought that this is it's nice, but there's a problem of if we want to add, if we want to change the camera on the AI deck, for instance, we're probably going to need new plastic. Uh, we're also going to have to re-release the whole thing. So this will be the AI deck with a different sensor, for instance. And uh, the same goes for the multi-ranger. If we want to add the sensors on the multi-ranger, this will be the new multi-ranger with new sensors and so on. So we wanted something where it would be possible to kind of switch the sensors without switching the base and vice versa, switching the base without switching the sensors. So this is kind of where this idea started. Um, we also came up with a bunch of other requirements. The list is not complete, but uh, there's some, uh, uh, some stuff we want and also some challenges. Um, so if we want to do this, we need something that's small and light. I mean, the crazy fly is about 30 grams. We can't add that much weight to it. Um, we also need something that's small. So this idea did not exist in 2014. So there's no extra room made for this. So we need something that's going to fit in between everything. 
<clears throat> we also need something that can handle uh, higher data rates that comes with the sensors that we add. We want something to be easy, uh, something that's easily exchangeable. Uh, just like the decks we have today, you plug it in and it's just going to work. Uh, crashing, of course, this happens, so we need to handle that. And we also want it to be possible for users to make your own, just like the decks we have today. So if you want to make your own deck, you can go to GitHub, you can download the KiCad uh, template for making the deck. Um, we sell the expansion connectors for it, so you can make your own electronics and add to the Crazyfy. Uh, so this is something that we want as well for the, for the forwards uh, facing one. And then it can't be too custom. Uh, we need something that fits the different configurations we have now. So the upcoming Crazyfy br brushless, um, we need to fit like uh, Crazyfy 2.0 with, um, with the different propellers that we now have, with the different motors we now have. And we also need something with a lot of signals. So if you want to add a camera with a DVP interface, for instance, you need a lot of signals. So, um, this is what we built. So this is the prototype we have today. Um, so it's based on the ESP32S3. So it's the same microcontroller that we have on the AI deck today. Um, it has, we made a, a bunch of different, uh, we call it vision expansions um, uh, to test out the concept. So from the left, we have a RGB sensor um, together with a ST time of flight sensor on the expansion. Uh, the next one is a thermal camera 8x8. Uh, another thermal camera, um, I think it's 32 by 24. And the last one to the right then is the FLIR Lepton uh, 3.5, which is uh, it's 160 by 120. So we did these to kind of try out the concept, um, see if it will fly, literally. Um, we also tested it on the different platforms. Uh, so the brushless we've been flying it on. We also want to test it on the 2.1, for of course. Um, and like I said, the size and the weight is important. So I think the, the little uh, the little vision decks are, I think, they're 20 by 18 millimeters, the prototypes we have today. And uh, the deck itself is uh, about uh, 4 grams. And the expansions are between one and a half and two and a half grams. So if you compare it to the AI deck, for instance, the AI deck is four and a half grams, roughly. Uh, and this prototype, together with RGB camera and the ST time of flight sensor, uh, is about one extra gram. So it's five and a half uh, grams. So it's not nothing, but one extra gram, you do get a lot of uh, uh, customizability for this. So what does this look like? Here is some pictures of a, of a prototype. So this is with the RGB camera and the time of flight sensor um, from the front. And on the back, you can see how the current prototype is working. So there's a right angle, uh, quite high density connector that basically slots in the board. Yeah, and here is a, a, a few different crazy flies with different sensors. So the top, uh, the bottom left one is with a FLIR one, the, the uh, top center one is RGB camera, and the bottom right is the other uh, thermal camera. So about the connector. So the connector, like I said, it needs to be quite high density because we need a lot of signals for what we want to add on this. So the current CrazyFly one is 20 pins, all in all. Um, but this is, yeah, the density is too low. So we selected a, a connector that has uh, 30 pins. Uh, six of them on the current prototype is then uh, dedicated for power, which gives a power budget of 900 milliamps at 3 volts. We dedicated one of the pins to the one wire system. So we want to have the same kind of functionality that we have with a CrazyFly today. So if you want to change your camera, you power off a CrazyFly, you pop off the module, you pop in another one, and you power it on, and it's going to work. It's the plan. Uh, and then there's, additional, there's an additional 23 signals uh, to be used. Uh, right now, it's just things are very tight. So it's uh, uh, we kind of routed it as best we could. Uh, and we're using the pin max from the ESP32. But the plan is then to add something. If we were to do this, we need to add something like what we have today for the uh, 
uh, for the expansion connector, uh, what bus goes where, and so on. So uh, an example, for instance, so this is the uh, RGB camera with the VL sensor. Uh, so like I said, the six pins for power, the camera takes up to 17 pins for the camera bus and the control pins. The VL sensor takes five pins with the data uh, for control, and then there's uh, uh, one pin left. Uh, sorry, one pin for the one wire and then two pins left. This could have been, yeah. We could probably do without some of the control signals, but still, uh, it, adding the sensors requires a lot of uh, um, a lot of signals. So it, we need a connector with a lot of uh, a lot of pins. So I think that's it for the technical part. Um, let's see if we can see a video of this working. So this is the demo that we're planning to show at ICRA next week. Um, the plan is to to have, uh, uh, if possible, two crazy flies flying. So one crazy fly with the RGB camera and the depth um, uh, sensor, and one camera with the uh, uh, FLIR to get a thermal image. Um, so we made a little app for this. So you can see on the, can I do the laser pointer thing? Yeah, here. So here is one deck. This shows the. Uh, RGB one, and here is the other deck that shows the FLIR sensor. So we're both streamed with UDP to this application um, uh, and shown. So let's see if we can see a, a video of this working. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the next steps. So, uh, like Kimberly said, this is a prototype. Uh, so we're still evaluating the solution. Um, will uh, will it work mechanically? Will it fit? Will it be the right? Uh, will it be big enough to add sensors and so on? Um, we're also, of course, going to look at like defining the interface, the signals, and also look at. Uh, adding other uh, boards and the ESP only to try the concept of not only changing the sensors, but also changing the kind of baseboard of it. Yeah, so that's it for me, for the technical one. Um, so if you have any questions, shoot, or any ideas, or any comments on what you would like to see, like both on the baseboard, but also in, in terms of sensors, shoot. Right. So, if anybody has any questions, yep. just raise your hand or ask it also in the chat, then I can read it out to Marcus. Or just uh, perhaps a comment of, uh, sounds good. <laughs> please, uh, please give us more. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I can show the. We have a first question by Stratos. Go for it. Yeah, shoot. Do you want to? Uh, you're you're. Um, it seems like you're muted at the moment, uh, Stratos. If you want to say something. Hmm. We cannot hear you because you're still muted. So I'll just give the. I'll just. Uh, do we have a question on the chat? So let me just uh, ask that first uh, from Ben Jarvis. Hey, from EPFL. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, have you found any issues with interference from Wi-Fi? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, we haven't done that much testing yet. So I mean, the, the, we we uh, uh, rewrote the part of the AI deck code to work with UDP instead. Um, and the, I, we think the framework is much better and the throughput is better. Um, but as for Wi-Fi interference, unfortunately, I can't really answer that yet. Anybody have any other questions? Yeah. 
Yes, okay. Uh, so uh, Status is actually Patrick. Um, and he works in the warehousing and bought our drone and um, is very happy with it. Uh, let's see. So after testing the Wi-Fi protocol of UDP is the best experience for as a non-professional. The Bluetooth connection is unstable. Yeah, we kind of know that. Um, the camera is the most interesting with the flow deck sensor because together it will have an open stable flight for good camera processing images. Have you planned for attaching sideway decks on multiple? Oh, sorry, that's a different. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if you have a question, Status. Uh, do you have a question on that? So could you perhaps uh, compile a question for us, if you have one, or else we'll uh, read that message later. Um, or Patrick, sorry. Uh, I'll just move on to the next uh, question. Uh, do you have pl plans for attaching sideways decks on multiple sites? Um, no, not yet, but uh, this might be something that we try, yeah. Uh, the problem is fitting um, fitting it outside the expansion connector. One option would be to skip the expansion connector having it through hole, but then you need the, this board to be on top, uh, so to say, because then the, the connector won't go through, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it would be very nice to have it on the sides as well. Uh, but I'm not sure it's going to fit. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so Patrick has an also another um, has a question. Is there a way to reduce the costs with Mo Movidius chips? Where are they, or are they in a similar way? Is there something that you can? Uh... Yeah, I mean the mm, when it comes to mm, the processing part, this is something that I mean. Um, the idea is to be able to change this over time. So just like the crazy fly uh, was released with uh, no positioning system, and we added positioning systems afterwards, like with different decks. Um, I think the plan, if if we do this, then the plan is to add sensors along the way. And if we add sensors that requires more processing, then we also would need to upgrade the board that does the um, uh, handling of the sensors. Uh, and I think that we're, I mean, we're looking at different options. Um, but yeah, let's see where we end up. All right. We had a follow up uh, comment from uh, Ben Jarvis about the mm -hmm. uh, Wi Fi interference. Um, yeah. So they tried an ESP32 with an external antenna, found that they also kind of had a lot of interference of that when flying the Crazy Fly. They were using Crazy mm -hmm. Storm to mocap. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, experience indeed. Um, perhaps uh, I think uh, Crazy Swarm 2 is also, they have some type of AI deck integration in it as well. That's perhaps also something to uh, say to the maintainers. <clears throat> I am mm -hmm. one of the maintainers, but it would be more, I think, for Wolfgang, it's going to be a better question. So uh, we have another question for Marcus how to handle uh, the power consumption on the ESP32? May it crash during takeoff? Uh, yeah, 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 but, okay, yeah, sorry, um, yeah, so uh, for this uh, deck we we're, we have a different power solution that we're hoping to, that uh, um, is better at handling the drops when you, the thrust changes rapidly. All right, so I hope that's answer your questions. Mm -hmm. um, Minji Kim had a uh, question about how is the 8 by 8 depth obtained in the presentation slide? Yeah, so this is uh, this is obtained from the uh, time of flight sensor from ST, the VL53L5CX, I think it's called. Um, uh, so it is on, so if I show this, so this is, it's on the side here, here on top. Uh, together with the uh, with the camera, so it's acquired uh, yeah, flight to see and then sent to the computer with UDP and then we map it to colors to yeah make the visualization better. All right, are there any more questions? I uh, perhaps have a 
question uh, just add in there. Uh, have we already flown with it? How does the connector work well with uh, vibrations? Yeah, it's no, uh, this seems fine. Right? Okay. Yeah, we've been flying it uh, for the demo. So, uh, for next week. Yeah. And uh, if I may add a <clears throat> little new information, we just crashed it. Uh, the camera flew away, put it back, restart the crazy fly, and it works again. All right. So, uh, yeah. Good to hear. So <laughs> far, so good. Yes. Type, though. So some uh, glue yeah. surprise. <laughs> No yeah. we'll, tell you after, uh, we'll tell you after Japan, uh, after yeah. this conference, to see you. Yeah, if you're still looking alive. forward to some feedback on this. All right. Uh, so is, yeah. there... is there any comments on uh, on what kind of sensors that would be interesting to put here? We have a, a list. Uh, one thing that we would be interested in would be like a, a maybe a radar sensor. Anything else that would be interesting here? You can uh, mention it also in the chat if you rather want to prefer that. Yeah. So uh, let's say we have camera, we have the uh, the rain sensor, the 8 by 8 then we have the infrared camera. Yeah. Um, those are the three, at least the three that we're That's going to demo. Yeah. Hmm. Anything else, people? <laughs> No, but uh, we have two more thermal cameras, but no other sensors for this prototype yet. All right. Yeah. Perhaps that's good enough for now. Yeah. <laughs> if nobody's, yeah, uh, I, so. I guess people are just interested in just getting it out with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be actually, it's going to be really cool. I cannot wait to get my hands on one, to be honest. But yeah. there's uh, only a few prototypes to be lying around. <laughs> I'll wait after I grab. Soon. Yeah. Yes. Any uh, hands up of people that are going to ICRA and would like to um, see this one action? Nobody coming? Ah, nice. Mm -hmm. These two, three. Awesome. So uh, make sure to uh, to visit our booth because we have a fully autonomous swarm demo. Uh, and uh, we'll be demo demoing the this new deck as well. So you should definitely uh, drop by during the coffee break or the lunch breaks. Um, yeah. I think I'll and just also the, hmm? also the brushless and the brushless, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's uh, totally forgot about that. <laughs> so uh, make sure to, to make sure to drop by. So if there's any not any more questions about this topic in particular, I think I'll just close off the recording if that's okay. But we can still, you guys can still ask questions without the recording on afterwards, if you prefer. All right.